This video is sponsored by JLCPCB. What's up guys, Leon here. Welcome back to Tesla on Me. In my last video, I showed you a life hack which makes winding a Tesla coil much easier. But the point is, we still have to wind the coil with our hands. It would be incredible if we could just press a button and the coil start winding automatically. That is not science fiction or magic. This is reality, guys. But let's start from the beginning. In our modern world, almost everything is now automated. This has many advantages. And honestly, I personally wound enough Tesla coils by hand in my life. You can't really brag well with the skill either. So Leon, tell me, is there anything you're really good at? Yeah, I'm good at winding Tesla coils by hand. In principle, the function of a coil winding machine is quite simple. We have a tube onto which the coil is to be wound. The tube rotates. Parallel to the tube is a rail with a slider that guides the wire. The coil is wound by the rotation of the tube. However, we want to have all windings perfectly next to each other. Therefore, the slider moves a little bit to the side after each rotation. Logically, the movement should be as large as the diameter of the wire. So that sounds quite simple. That is the theory. Now I will show you how I put it into practice. First I made some sketches of how the machine should look like. The frame of the machine should be very solid and robust. That's why I decided to use aluminum profiles. These can be processed well and combined with 3D printing. I then used Fusion 360 to draw all the necessary components and then 3D printing them. The assembly then was super easy because you could simply screw the 3D printed parts to the profiles with the help of these small nuts. The slider itself was laser cut by my friend Mo, so definitely check out his channel. The rollers, motors and belt are all parts that are also installed in 3D printers. This makes the assembly even easier. After everything was assembled, finally I need to wire everything up. The tube, on which the secondary coil is later wound, is rotated by a stepper motor with these belts. Each rotation is detected and measured by a light barrier. The axle runs on ball bearings, however, I could have spared myself this professional mounting. To prevent the slider from destroying itself, there is an end stop switch on each side of the rail. On one side there is also a holder for a wire spool. This can be turned very easily, since the axle is held by ball bearings. On the slider, which is also controlled by a stepper motor, there are pulleys that guide the wire. The red laser is really superfluous. The whole machine is controlled by an Arduino Uno, on which a stepper motor driver shield is mounted. Yeah, I know it looks a bit messy, but that doesn't matter. Hmm, now we have reached a point where I can't get any further. Programming for me is like learning a new language. So at this point for me, it's impossible. Fortunately, I know the best programmer in the world. Live. He did an amazing job and programmed the machine completely. He also noticed that the setup is not optimal yet, but more about that later. We will now wrap these PVC pipes. I have sanded them a bit so that the wire holds better. We now attach the tube on the axle. Here we definitely have to think about another system, because attaching the tube is really nerve wracking. The coil is later wound with a super thin wire. The wire is as thin as my hair, about 0.05 mm. To start winding, we first have to clamp the spool. The wire is then fed through the pulleys on the slider and attached to the tube with some tape. We use this control panel to set up our machine. First we have to enter the wire parameters.
then only have to set the length of the coil. This will be about 13 cm. Also the number of turns is calculated directly. A <laughs> Good job life! And go! I'm so sorry for the flickering light, the shots will be even better. Hmm, now something happened that should not have happened. Let's just try it again. Shit. The problem is that the slider is not moving forward enough. In principle, the wire must be always at 90 degree angle to the tube. However, due to the slider advancing too little, the angle becomes smaller and smaller. At some point the angle is so small that the wire bounces back. I now change the wire parameters. The feed is now with 0.062mm a lot bigger. Let's see how the coil looks. Unfortunately, the coal is not perfect now. Let's try a smaller tube. Huh, I don't think we can finish the coil. The coal didn't look so good anyway. The interesting thing is that I have already wound some perfect coils with an offset of 0.056mm. I think the problem is in the hardware. I noticed that the axis of the stepper motor is not quite straight. I have now replaced the motor. Runs very clean. Now oiling all the rollers. If the coal doesn't get perfect now, I don't know what to do. Now we have to wait for the new wire, but we can use this time for a promotional break. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. JLC PCB is a PCB manufacturer which allows you to make your own PCBs. For only $2 you already get 5 PCBs. If that is not a good price, you can even go one step further. If you use the PCB assembly service, you don't even have to assemble the boards. Believe me, especially with SMD components you save a lot of trouble. The only thing you have to do is save your Gerber file as a zip file. Once this is done, select the desired parameters. Lead free? <laughs> yeah, definitely. What color are you in favor of? <laughs> Purple is sexy, isn't it? Just upload the file, order and you're done. Within 24 hours your PCB will be produced. And a few days later they will arrive. If you register at JLC PCB via the link in the video description, you will get 4 coupons with a total value of $27. The new wire has now arrived. After recalibrating everything, I'm very optimistic that this time everything works. As I mentioned earlier, the machine is far from perfect. There is always some tolerance due to using a timing belt on the slider. This would need to be replaced with a spindle for example, just like in a 3D printer. The drive of the coil itself is also not optimal. Here we would have to work with a timing belt and not with a V-belt. But for now, I'm really satisfied. So guys, I really hope that you love my new coal warning machine. I think I will produce some more videos about it in future, so be curious guys. Let's come to the giveaway of the second last video. The winner is chosen randomly, there were 4 dead MOSFETs in the video. 
So guys, attention. The winner is Noel Andrew. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Congratulations, Noel. You win the con package consisting out of a working HF SSDC, a laser cut primary coil, and a GO50 for a vacuum tube Tesla coil. With that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, leave me a comment down below. And then, guys, we'll see us in the next video.